welcome learners in the last video lecture we have derived up to the strain in ef layer the equation comes like e equal to e na plus 1 plus e na 1 divided by r dash minus 1 by r into y divided by whole divided by 1 plus y by r so once you calculate the strain you can calculate stress which is the bending stress which is nothing but strain into h modulus so in the equation 5.14 we are just going to multiply it with h modulus so stress uh, we just multiply the strain equation by e so why don't we stop here why don't we use it this bending stress expression to calculate the bending stress the problem here is uh, here in that equation, you don't know what is initial strain in the centroidal layer, that is E0. You don't know E0 and also you don't know what is the deformed radius of curvature. If you know these two things, E0 and R dash, we can stop here itself. But since we don't know, we are going to further continue this derivation and we will stop we will, when we arrive, all the expressions for bending stress equation comes. So once you know the stress, you can calculate force. Since we calculate the stress for a small strip, we are for calculating stress, for sorry, for calculating force, we are going to multiply stress with that integral area and we are going to integrate over the whole area. So stress into dA, we integrated to the whole section. So while upon doing that, uh, while upon doing that, we calculate the first term comes like integral E0 into dA. Since E0 is constant, you can take it out. So, integral of dA is nothing but the area of the cross section. The first term comes like E into E0 into A. The second term, first in the integration, this integration looks a little complex, but once you take the constant terms outside, it will be 1 plus E0 is constant, you can take it out. E you are going to multiply it, and also the term radius of curvature bracket terms, it is also constant. The radius of curvature before deformation and the radius of curvature after deformation is constant. So you can take it out. So the only remaining terms inside the integral is the variable terms are y dA divided by 1 plus y by r. So the force expression is given in 5.16. Once you know the force, you can calculate moment. Moment is similar. Stress into y into dA. For force, we multiply stress directly with the area. But for calculating moment, we have to multiply stress with the perpendicular distance into area so it comes like uh, the first term similarly as we see in the force the first term e and e naught it's constant you can take it now integral of y dA it will come and the second term instead of y dA you will be getting a y square dA the concepts are similar you have to take the constant terms outside and you have to integrate and also the first term integral y dA after taking e x minus and e naught constant out, you will be getting the term integral y dA. So, moment about first neutral axis is always a 0. So, your integral y dA will become 0. So, first term goes to 0. And the second term, if you take all the constant terms outside, the last term will be getting integral y square dA divided by 1 plus y by u. For simplification of this derivation, we take this term integral y square dA divided by 1 plus y by r as a h square h square uh, as you can see it depends upon the cross section of the beam it doesn't depends upon the material property or anything like that it depends solely on the cross section of the beam so a h square is nothing but integral y square dA divided by 1 plus y by r so instead of that i am writing uh, instead of the integration part i am going to write it as a h square so finally in equation 5.19 the moment equation comes like a into 1 plus e naught 1 divided by r dash minus 1 by r into a h square. This a h square we have to calculate, but it depends upon till now you can you can assume it as it depends upon the cross section of the beam. How to calculate h square for individual cross sections? We will be seeing it later. So in the equation 5.16, that integration term we are going to change. What is the integration term in 5.16? Integral y dA divided by 1 plus y by r. That we are going to write it as in 5.16 integral y dA divided by 1 plus y by r. We are going to write in terms of a h square. How to write? We will see. Now consider uh, in the first, it is not y square dA divided by 1 plus y by r. It is y. Please note it. It is not. The left hand side is 
not y square dA by 1 plus y by A, it is y dA divided by 1 plus y by A. So, after taking a sim and uh, taking the denominator to the numerator, you will get RYA dA divided by R plus 1. Okay. So, integral RY dA divided by R plus y. Here in the numerator, you have to add plus y square and minus y square. So, in the numerator with the RY, you have to add plus y square and minus y square. So, RY plus y square, in that if you take y as common outside, it will be coming as R plus y. R plus y and R plus y will be cancelling and you will be having minus y square divided by R plus y. As we see earlier, integral y dA is 0 and uh, we know y square dA R plus y A. Just now we assume it is uh, a h square. Just now we assume integral y square dA divided by 1 plus y by r. We have assumed it as a h square. So, integral y dA divided by 1 plus y by r it comes like minus 1 by r a h square. Minus 1 by r a h square. So, uh, for instead of this e uh, integration part y dA divided by 1 plus y by r in the equation 5.16. In the force equation, we are substituting instead of this integration part, we are substituting minus 1 by r divided by a h square. Minus 1 by r divided by a h square. As we all know, the transverse frictions, transverse plane sections before bending remains plane after bending. The total force acting on the cross section must be 0. There will be compressive force, there will be tension force. Upon adding that, the net force in the cross section will be 0. We are going to use that uh, into our advantage. So, we know what is the total force. We are substituting total force equal to 0. When we are doing that, after cancelling the similar terms, we are getting an expression for E0. So, once you get the expression for E0, it comes like that 1 plus E0 into 1 divided by R dash minus 1 by R into H square by R. So, 5.22, the expression for E0, we are going to substitute in moment equation. We are going to substitute in this moment equation. Okay. So, if you substitute that, it will be coming like 1 plus E naught into 1 by R dash minus 1 by R into H square will be equal to M divided by A E. Equal to M divided by A E. A -E. So, instead of 1 plus E naught 1 divided by R, R dash minus 1 by R, you can substitute that into E naught. You can substitute that into E naught. So, upon simplifying, E0 will be coming like M divided by AE0. As I, as, you, as I already told, we don't know what is E0. But we can calculate from the equation M divided by AE0. M is nothing but the moment applied. A is the area of cross section. E is the Young's modulus. Initial radius of curvature, we will know. So, instead of E0, we can apply for M divided by AE0. So, Thus, the stress equation stress will be changed into instead of E0, we are going to apply all these things M A E R M divided by A E H square. Similarly, in the second term, 1 plus E0, 1 divided by R dash minus 1 by R, you have to substitute M divided by A E, and after that, you have to apply once more M into A E R. Okay. From 5.1, 5.22, this second term, 1 plus E0, 1 by R dash, you can substitute as E0 R by H square. E0 R by H square. Once again, for E0, you have to substitute M divided by AE0. You are, once again, you have to substitute E0 divided by M divided by So, upon simplifying, you will be easily getting this equation. Sigma equal to and M divided by AR. M is the moment of the moment of play. A is the cross section area of the cross section. R is the radius of initial radius of curvature. 1 plus R square by H square. R is the radius of curvature. H is the H square we have to find. H square is is a constant for a particular cross section that we can find we will be seeing it in a little later so y divided by r plus y so this is the bending stress equation for the curved beams so in the term we know, we, we know all the terms in the expression for bending stress once if it is compression if it is compressive bending stress you can easily calculate by putting instead of y minus y so minus y the terms will be like sigma equal to m by a r 1 minus r square by h square into y divided by r minus y. So, this is the bending stress equation for tensile and compressive stress for curved beams. So, for h square, h square we have to 
find the formula h square h square as we already know a h square is integral y square divided by 1 plus y by r into dA so uh, upon uh, taking LCM in the denominator and moving the r to the numerator it will be coming like r by a integral y square divided by r plus y dA so here what you have to what you are going to do is you have to add plus r square and minus r square plus r square and minus r square so you will be getting terms like y square plus r square minus r square after that the term y square minus r square in the numerator you have to look for a square minus b square equal to a plus b into a minus b upon simplifying it you will be getting the terms r by a minus the first term will be like y da you will be getting a 0 and r a integral r square da divided by r plus y so again simplifying it you will be getting h square equal to r cube by a integral da r plus y minus r square this is the general formula for h square for individual section we will be calculating in the coming slides so for rectangular section so we know the formula for h square is r cube a into 1 divided by r plus y da minus r square so here we are taking origin as a centroidal axis and the, the limit will be varying from minus d by 2 plus d by 2 either one side will be compressive and other side will be tensive so it will be minus d by 2 to plus d by 2 r cube is a constant we are taking up and area of rectangular cross section is nothing but b into d we are putting that similarly y is the distance between where you want the bending stress and the centroidal axis so we are sub upon substituting all those things limit we are substituting as minus d by 2 to d by 2 da integral integral small instantaneous area so it's nothing but b into dy minus r square so upon integrating 1 by r y is nothing but log e r plus y so upon substituting the limits you will be getting as log e r plus d by 2 minus log e r minus d by 2 so log a minus log b is nothing but log a by b i am using the formula we will be getting so h square for rectangular section is nothing but r cube by d into ln of 2r plus d divided by 2r minus d minus r square similarly for various cross sections the h square values are i am showing it here if you want any derivation you email it to me i will send the derivation for every cross sections so as i told earlier the rect for rectangle cross section the like h square values is r cube d into log e 2r plus d 2r minus d minus r square for triple section it is little longer but the terms are similar here b is the capital b small capital b is the large width of the trapezoidal section b is the small width of the trapezoidal section d1 d2 is the depth so how you calculate d1 and d2 it's given d by 3 is b plus 2b divided by b plus b d2 is d it's nothing but uh, the distance of centroid from the small width and capital breadth so for circular section h square is d square by 16 plus 1 by 128 d for 4 by r square for triangular section and uh, for t section the values for h square is given in these slides so once you know the once you know the h square you can cal use this bending stress equation to calculate the bending stress of curved beams so here in bending stress equation m is the bending moment you apply a is the area of the cross section r r is the initial radius of curvature and h square is the h square is a constant for a particular cross section if you use a rectangular section the it will be different if you if you use a trapezoidal section it will be different so before calculating the bending stress you have to calculate h square for a particular section and why why is this distance of section from the centroidal axis where you need a bending stress so the derivation is over in the next lecture we will be seeing some problems on curved beams thank you